All right, so starting off with problem one, we have that the function f is given as the equation f of x is 4 over x plus 5x minus 1, and we have to find f prime of 2. So this is pretty simple. You just have to find the derivative of this and then plug in 2. So um, let's use the power rule. So let's rewrite f of x as... 4x to the negative 1 plus 5x minus 1. And then f prime of x will be negative 4x to the negative 2 plus 5. And then f prime of 2 will just be negative 4 over, well, over 2 squared plus 5. So negative 4 over 4, so negative 1 plus 5 which will give us four. And so the answer will be A. All right, problem B, or problem two. Let's um, evaluate the integral, six e to the three x dx. So um, we just have to remember like that the derivative of e to the three x is gonna be e to the three x except we have to use a chain rule. So instead of multiplying by three, we're gonna divide by three. So this will be six times e to the three x over three plus our constant c. Six over three becomes two. And then our answer will then just be two e to the three x, so a again. Problem three. Yeah, I just had to adjust the lighting in case you're wondering. Okay, so um, here we have the graph of y equals f of x, and we we need to find the limit of f of x as x approaches one. Now, for the limit to exist, that means that when you approach it from the left and the right, you're going to have the same value. But as you can see from the left, we're approaching this point here at 1. I'm sorry, from the right, we're approaching this value here. Or from the positive side, we're approaching 1. But from the negative side, we're approaching 3. So since these two values are not, are not equal, the limit's not going to exist. Problem four, if f prime of x is 3x squared plus 2x and f of 2 is 3, then f of 1 is, so um, we're just going to use the concept of integrating a derivative, because when you integrate a derivative, in this case f prime of x, you're going to get the function f of x plus c. So then let's let's first find the antiderivative of this, which will be 3x cubed over 3 only write it over here. 3x cubed over 3 plus 2x squared over 2 plus c plus c1, these cancel. So we get x cubed plus x squared plus c1 for f of x. Now we know that f of two is three, so when we plug in two, we should get three. So we get eight plus four. plus c1, this will give us 3. This is 12, so then we know c1 is going to be it's going to be on um, negative 9. So then f of x is then going to be x cubed plus x squared minus 9. And so f of 1 will simply be 1 
plus one minus nine. So then it'll just be negative, negative seven. And so the answer will be B. Problem five, during an evacuation drill, people leave a building at a rate of R of T people per minute, where T is the number of minutes since he started the drill. Selected values of R of, R of T are shown in the table above. Using a right Riemann sum with three subintervals and data of the table, what is the approximation of the number of people who leave the building during the first 15 minutes of the evacuation drill? Okay, so using the right Riemann sum means that we're gonna use, we're essentially making um, rectangles, geometrically speaking, or we're gonna use like the, the top right corner as the heights. So um, this is the base of one. This would be the base of the second. This would be the base of the third. Actually, I prefer, I prefer just to draw in the, I like drawing these, so let me just draw it. So, T and R of T. So we have zero, 100. Five, 100. Ten comma seventy five. Ten comma seventy five, and then fifteen comma fifty five. Is not drawn to scale. So, a right rim sum will be rectangles like this. Each of these have a base of five. So we're going to have 5 times 100 plus 5 times 75 plus 5 times 55. And that'll give us 1150. And so the answer is B. Problem six, if we have that y is x squared times e x or e to the x minus one, then dy dx is, so we're just finding the derivative. So we can just use product rule. So y prime will be the derivative of x squared, which is two x times e to the x minus one plus x squared times the derivative of e to the x minus one times the derivative of e to the x minus one, which is just e to the x. So here we just we were just going to simplify. So two x e to the x minus two x plus x squared e to the x. And so the answer is just C. Problem seven, a particle moves along the x-axis so that at any time t, the acceleration a of t is negative four sine of two t. If the velocity of the particle at t equals zero is v of zero equals seven and its position at t equals zero is x of zero equals zero, then its position at time t is x of t equals. Okay, so it could, it could sound overwhelming, but but um, we just have to remember the integral. When we integrate acceleration, we're gonna get velocity. And when we integrate velocity, we're gonna get position. 
In this case, they're using X of T of position. So then same thing, X of T will say. So let's start off by integrating acceleration. So we're gonna integrate negative four sine of two T dt and we'll get remember the antiderivative so we're gonna have the cosine of 2t over 2 but it's gonna be the negative cosine time times that 4 so that, that 4 over 2 cancels plus our constant C1. So we're gonna get negative two cosine of two T, whoops, cosine of two T plus C1. This is our velocity. We switch pens. Now we're told the velocity B of zero is seven. So we plug in zero here. So, so the cosine of zero is um, the cosine of zero is 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 um what am I is 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 one. So, so negative two times one. And a brain freeze it. Brain freeze negative two times one plus c one is going to give you. Is going to give us seven, so then we know C one will be will be nine. Or no, hold on. What am I doing here? Uh, this is this is positive, yeah, because because the derivative or acceleration is negative, so this is positive cosine. My bad, my bad, my bad, but no worries. So it's just positive two plus C one. So then C one is just positive five. And then, so our velocity equation is going to be two times the cosine of two t plus five, and then we integrate this to get um position. So let's write it over here so we have some more room. With the integral of velocity integrating this we're going to get the sine of 2t two, 2 over 2 but these 2's cancel plus 5t plus c2 And then we just have to solve for um, C2 because we're given that at zero, at X is zero is zero. And then, oh, so then C2 is just zero because we plug zero in for T. We should get zero plus five times zero plus C2. So C2 is just gonna be zero. Oh, so then it's just, it's just gonna be a sign of two T plus five T. And so the answer is A. Sorry for being so messy on that one. I'm usually better about that. Number eight. I have to zoom out. Okay. So we're given the second derivative of f, and we need to find the function s. So this is f double prime. So f, let's study where the zeros are. That's always the key. So breaking it up at, at where it changes from positive to negative. So in here, it's negative before it's positive and then after it's positive. 
the positive, negative, positive. Now, when the second derivative is negative, remember that means the graph of, of f is gonna be concave down. When, when the second derivative is positive, it means the graph of f is concave up. So we wanna ba basically find a graph that can match this. Ho hopefully there's only gonna be one, otherwise we have to go some, have to do some more investigating, but concave down in the middle from negative one to one. So it's not A, because this is switching both. It's not this one. This one, same thing, because it's not, it's going up and then down within that. We only want it to go down. We only want it to be like that. Yeah, so it looks like it's gonna be D, because D does this, and then does this after. Yeah, so the answer is D. It's gonna be the best graph. All right, so I'm gonna take a break here. Um, so um, let me know um, if you're, um, if, if I'm doing a good job explaining this or if you have any questions, like leave me some comments, give me some feedback. Um, I obviously wanna make sure that this is a helpful video for you guys to help you study. Um, so yeah, don't, don't feel bad about hurting my feelings. Um, I'm gonna be looking to make, um, summary videos of all the units um, that are going to be like really quick and and hit the hit the key points so that right before the AP exam you can look them over really quickly and um, I'm going to try to go ahead and do as many practice problems from um, from past exams so just let me know what you guys want um, and if you're enjoying this stuff if it's helpful like give me a like and please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video